All right, guys, so a few days ago on Wednesday, I came out with the five things I was wrong about for fantasy football, but now is a little bit of time to gloat. These are the five things that I slash we were right about in fantasy football this season. Starting off, number one, top tight ends. So I was big on getting Travis Kelsey or Mark Andrews, not Kyle Pitts. Gotta point that out, not Kyle Pitts. I was not big on, on Kyle Pitts, but I really wanted to get Mark Andrews and Travis Kelsey in all my leagues. I was in three leagues this year. I drafted Kelsey in one. I drafted, uh, I drafted Andrews. Andrews in one, and I drafted Goddard in the other. Traded him, Goddard to you for Kittle, and I eventually did get Mark Andrews out of George Kittle. So, all three of my leagues, I have at least one of Travis Kelsey or Mark Andrews, and all three of my leagues, I made the playoffs. All three, I made the semifinals, and of course, did win one league. You're welcome. One league, very much courtesy of this man. But yes, it, the the top the top end tight ends were such a difference maker this year. They really were, because. Really outside the top three of uh, Goddard, Andrews, and Kelsey. Kittle. Kittle over Goddard. I, well, Kittle ended up number four overall. Uh, Hawkinson even really came around. Hawkinson. I think Hawkinson finished three. That was, But that was kind of hard to predict because we saw what he had done with the Lions. But then we he never really, expected he really him to came get traded. On. Yeah, he really came on with the Vikings. So you can't really... Yeah. As, but but he, that, met, that, he was one of the top tight ends drafted, typically. Yes. Um... But, you know, really outside of Kelsey, everybody else, like, even Benjamin or Bram made the joke. He's like, there's no expectations for tight ends. Like, literally, it's Kelsey or bust. Yeah. And, um, really, I, I, I think Mark Andrews should be up there. It's really just Lamar's been injured all year. He would have been, yeah. Um, so, uh, plus, also, Mark Andrews is dealing with his own injuries. So, there's that. Um, same thing with Goddard. So, Goddard, I think, would have, I think it would have ended up 1, 2, 3, Kelsey, Andrews, Goddard. Number two, trades are a must. Trades make or break your season, and uh, these t- us two definitely know this more than any. Uh, our main fantasy football league, El Cream Team Fantasy Football League, he beat me week one of the season. I made not close. Not I subsequently, close. I sub- we both subsequently made a lot of trades throughout the year. I at the end of the season, I, I didn't win the championship, but on paper, I certainly had the best team in the league. Mm-hmm. Uh, Where did you finish? Um, I, we're not determined. He yet. finished, he finished at best second to last. We are we have, we have a, we have the Denny's bowl going on. Loser 24 hours in a Denny's. Each pancake is an hour off their time. But I, I label this trades are a must because looking at teams that didn't make a lot of trades, I'm talking, I'm talking Andrew, I'm talking Andrew, I'm talking Jay, Brandon. Those are some good teams there. Kyle made a few, but we, they all had flaws that. Just one or Tyrell. two injuries. Oh well, Tom Tyrus, the team just sucked. Like, I mean, Chris had the worst team in the league at one point. And guess what? He so traded his way up. Chris, he won the Super Bowl. He went from halfway through the season, he was in eleventh place, and he won the Super Bowl because he traded away Stephon Diggs, got Devontae Adams, and got a plethora of other other uh, options. He also traded a kicker for Jerry Judy. That's ridiculous. In for me, again, for me, I was able to... The, the, this is the guys that I traded for. I traded for Kyler Murray, Saquon Barkley, Aaron Jones after trading him away. Jalen uh, Waddle, Tyreek Hill, trade those for each other eventually. Tony Pollard, again, thank you very much for Tony Pollard. Did I give you... Was that was, that was James Robinson for Tony Pollard? Yes. Yeah. I, I actually gave you two players. Yeah. So, tra- tra- so trades were a must this year, and they really make or break teams. But there's you gotta pay the price. You gotta you gotta go out yeah. there and try to find value. So obviously with his team, it was uh, make it. I'm gonna be a man and just admit my mistakes. Um, Whew, and you made a lot of them. I made a lot of them. So I was right about my players, and that's really the <laughs> sad thing about it. And I was talked and talked to him and like, hey, I Ayuk is not that good. Uh, he had one good week, and I traded him. And I kept saying Ayuk is the best receiver on the 49ers. I think Ayuk's the biggest mistake you made. I think the biggest mistake was Ramondre. Ramondre was another one. See, but that one at the time wasn't as bad because Damian Harris. Well, we're not talking about the time. We're talking so, about what it ended up being. So what it ended up being. So um, I had at the time Michael Gallup coming up, uh, coming off my IR, and I needed to make some room. So I wanted to do like a two for one player trade. No one really wanted. Ramondre because he was at, he, at the time he was being out snapped. He wasn't by Dam- doing anything. He wasn't doing anything. He was being out snapped by Damian Harris and Ty Montgomery. Pretty much had all the receiving work, and that was Ramondre. Ramondre was supposed to be the receiving back, and that. But then week two, 
after I traded him, literally the next day, Ty Montgomery was put on IR. Uh, <laughs> and yeah. then, I mean, the rest is kind of history. I ended up trading back for him, but I ended up giving up JT in the process. Which actually ended up being very good for you. Like, obviously, you still didn't make the playoffs. You actually finished second to last. Uh, man, um, I wish we I wish we vlogged our experience that day when we got the Airbnb. We got an Airbnb week fourteen, and this guy, he was in he. When I say in denial, oh my gosh, denial is more than just a river with this guy. Like that, you were full on floating down the river of denial that day. It was absurd. But I feel like I feel like you have to make trades just because yeah. there's there's and I and I'll be the first to admit I I sent a lot of just BS offers just seeing if something stuck. Most of which obviously most of which didn't, but you I, never know. Jalen Waddle and Aaron Jones for who? Uh, Corliss Sutton Sanders and Miles. And now, to be fair, Sutton. that one, that wasn't even me. I didn't offer that. Joe offered. Joe offered me that deal. So, once you get, like, if if you get like a stupid offer like that, obviously take it. Um, given I was offered at the t- after week one, I was offered Tyree Kill and someone else for Jonathan Taylor. But week one, Saquon, Jonathan Taylor went Yeah, I was offered Saquon and Saquon and Yeesh. Tyree Kill for J, for JT. Uh, and I traded Austin Eckler and Jalen Waddle for that exact same pairing. So that just comes to show where yeah, they're at. Yeah, one that ended up being... I mean, week one, JT, 27, yeah. but no one expected that. Yeah, but tra- trades are, are, from my opinion, I go for them every single year. They are a must in fantasy football. Number three, avoiding players on bad teams. This is something that... It's it's not a hundred percent guarantee because we did see we did see like Terry McLaurin end up having a good season. DK Metcalf did better than I thought he would, but I'm looking at guys that are good players and they never reached the ceiling they could have. I'm looking at Damian Pierce. I'm looking at what ended up being Michael Pittman, Jonathan Taylor on the Indianapolis Colts, uh, Brian Robinson on the Washington Commanders. These players that have clear talent that you expect to do good, but because they're in such a bad team. They, they lose snaps. They lose goal, goal line work because they don't get to the goal line. They don't get into the red zone. They don't get in these opportunities to have these the upside of getting a touchdown. They're, they're these teams that, like Dave, uh, Dave Montgomery with the Chicago Bears. You can be a great player all you want, but if your, your team isn't in position to score touchdowns, that automatically lowers your ceiling a lot. Yeah, 100%. Um, I mean, just look at, I mean, Kyle Pitts was taken by most teams in, like, the high third round. Yeah. And, th- I mean, did anybody that actually drafted Kyle Pitts make the playoffs? Like, I know you Kyle have, didn't. You would have had to have drafted very well because, yeah, a lot of people... I Now, again, like I just said in the last one, I was not a Kyle Pitts believer for a multitude of reasons, and a, but a big reason was the fact that I think the Falcons' passing offense was going to be horrible. Guess what? It was right. horrible. It was horrible. Like, like Drake London had a, a few good weeks, but Mariota is not a good passer of the ball. Then Desmond Ritter comes in. He's not a great bad. quarterback. Very bad quarterback he appears to be. I was actually pretty high on Desmond Ritter coming into the draft, so he did not look good at all. When you have these bad, bad teams, they're bad because they can't score. I mean, sometimes like they have a good offense, bad defense. Detroit Lions, but even the Detroit Lions, like their offense is so good that they they're now almost on the precipice of the playoffs. Mm-hmm. These teams with bad offenses, but one very good player. Other defenses then can hyper focus on that. You're playing the Houston Texans and Damian Pierce is in. Okay, crowd the line of scrimmage. Brandon Cooks, also. He, he don't have one wide receiver that they're relying on. Okay, have him shadow every single every single play with a, with a, with a double team. They lose the upside. They have these uh, defenses focusing solely on them. So I always like to avoid bad uh, avoid players on bad. Number four, don't draft defense and kicker before your last two picks. It infuriates me when I see in an 11th round, someone taking the Buffalo Bills defense or the Pittsburgh Steelers defense. Why? Why? Two of my leagues this year, my second to last pick, the defense, Dallas Cowboys, other league, New England Patriots. I think they ended up being literally the top two defenses, maybe not literally, but one of, both of those were two of the best defenses in all, all, of, uh, all of fantasy football. And then every single week, you can find a kicker on waivers who can get you eight, nine, ten points. Usually four games into the season, the number one kicker is still on waivers. Why waste the opportunity to potentially grab a late round player this year? We saw like Isaiah Pacheco was taken with last last pick in a lot of drafts. Kadarius Tony was taken late. He didn't have that great of a season, but he could have. Um, looking at Justin Fields, there there there's these late round gems out there that you're 
picking a defense, you're picking a kicker that week to week you can just drop them and find somebody else. I never understand why teams elect, people elect to do that. Yeah, I, I don't really know. I mean, I told you in one of my leagues, the Buffalo Bills was actually taken in the second round. Um, well, we, we, we've, we've discussed your, that league. That um, league is a little special. It is the worst fantasy football league. I'm not going to get too much into but it's the worst fantasy football league I've ever seen. Other than the Adams League. Weird. Other than Adams League where it's like you can win two games at, in one week. See, but that, that I... I don't disagree with that but one. But that was not that. Yours that is that's that's if you have like more than like the top six. Also, like yeah. twelve man league, the top six. See that I, I don't like. Win. I don't like the twelve man. If it was like a twenty man league, that's different. Yeah. But like twelve man, I don't really like that. But yours is yours is the worst fantasy football league in yes. the history of fantasy I, football I'm leagues. Go, but I am taking over Commissioner Powers, and that will change. You should. You should. But yeah, it's it, it's ridiculous. You can find, and they're not going to score you a lot of points most weeks, and then. Let's say let's say the Jacksonville Jaguars, who most of the season had a pretty bad defense. Oh, all of a sudden these young players at the end of the season are starting to pick up, and their matchups are favorable because they're in a bad division. The circumstances change as the years goes on. How many how many teams in most fantasy football leagues keep the same defense all year long? You don't. You look at oh, at the end of the season this team's all they're, they're playing a team that's very beat up. The, the, the when the when the when the Browns played what was it the Texans or somebody. Uh, and they had like 33 points. The Browns got like 33 points against somebody. I forget who it was. But those circumstances arise where it just makes sense to grab these guys off of waivers. In the draft, you can you can have your free range at these potential late round hits. I don't understand why anybody drafts defensive kicker before your last two picks. And then finally, number five, Amon Ra St. Brown. Now I mostly threw this one in because of this guy right here. Uh, we're in we're we, you and I were in two leagues together. You're welcome. And one of the leagues, the draft lasted, what, six days? Something like that. Uh, we have an international friend who, for some reason, they decided that eight hours was the clock. So we had eight hours in between picks. Yeah. Uh, and mm. one of my picks, I was sitting there like, okay, Amon Ra, Amari Cooper. I did eventually get both. But you very much talked me into Amon Ra. I drafted him, and I drafted him again in our league, our yeah. team. And I'm very happy of doing so. So... The reason, by the way, I talked him into drafting a monitor on that uh, is because I didn't have a pick, I think, for like the next three rounds. Because uh, in that league, you were able to trade picks, and I traded some picks so I can get a plethora of great players that I ended up trading to you. Yeah. Um, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> One league. One league. With yeah, Amon I, I, too. I, I feel like I should get some. Yeah, you should. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, you should. I, I think I should. You'll get a firm handshake. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that's, all, uh, that's what you're going to get. <laughs> I, I definitely tickled the sand there, by the way. I think um, they heard it. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, but yeah, I, I was so high on Amon Ra. I had him last year, and uh, I picked him up off of waivers last year. And, I mean, just week 7 through uh, 14, I mean, oh my God, what the man did is just... He was the number um, one on receiver the last four or five weeks of the season. I, by far. Yeah. He, he was getting 110, 120-yard games with eight catches and was averaging a touchdown. Now, like, my worry was he did that without Hawkinson in the lineup, and he did that without Swift in the lineup. That is So he was true. the only option. They drafted Jameson, which we knew would eventually come back in the season. He's done virtually nothing. He's only had, like, what, one or two catches total. They trade away Hawkinson. DeAndre Swift's been hurt most of the year. So at the very least for this year, that perfect scenario that presented him all those points in those last few weeks basically saw the same thing this year. Yeah. Now, what I could see, though, is because of his performance this year, he could be overdrafted next year. He's probably going to be a second-round pick next year. I would say sometimes maybe even first. Because, I mean, he was – he finished, he finished what, eight? Uh, Waddle finished eight. I'm not sure where Amon. I think Amon Ra finished, like – he was in the top ten. He was, he was somewhere in the top ten, and, so, I mean, sometimes you get the – the top ten receivers, in, you know, in the first round. Especially, there's gonna be a lot more taken next year. That's something that I covered in the things I got wrong was yeah. undervaluing these top receivers. Like next year, I think three out of the la- uh, three out of the top well, five picks might be receivers. For, for instance, look at who you played in the Super Bowl this year. The guy had nobody beside. He had so yeah. He had Justin Fields and Jalen Hurts as his two quarterbacks, two late round quarterbacks, and then after that, he had Lenny and I think. I don't even remember. I don't remember either. It was very. It, it was. It did it not was matter. 
not it was a bad but then back. but but then you get to his receivers Justin Jefferson you had uh Tyreek Hill uh and Stefan Diggs and yeah. this man actually had CD Lamb but then traded for traded him to get yeah, Justin. Justin Jefferson which made a lot of sense yeah uh and th- those guys were higher picks like CD was a first round pick I'm on raw I got in like the seventh C- or eighth CD round CD was actually a second round pick in that league Pretty sure he was a first round pick. I pretty because I'm pretty sure I I think he was the seventh overall pick, and he, I think he was taken right after I took CMC. Oh, because I I took I told I tried to help, talking you into drafting CD also. You you no you told me after the case that I should have taken him. I was like, yeah, you're probably right. Um, but Amon Ra, especially in a dynasty league where I got him, I'm so thrilled to get to have gotten there. Your boy, your boy did a lot right. Most of was honestly a number two, the trades. I really did great with trades this year. I traded I traded James Connor. And Garrett Wilson for Derrick Henry. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I mean, so... Jalen Jalen Waddle and Aaron Jones for Miles Sanders and Cortland Sutton. So what, what I did, my best trade out of all of... My, my trades were pretty bad this year. Um, I if if you actually I could write a book on how not to trade. That's how... Yeah, we are literally polar opposite ends of the spectrum. Trades have... Trades won me the league last year... They got me. Th- I, I didn't. Dra- I drafted horribly last year. Oh, I didn't win the league last year. I got I'm second so place good, last year. I'm so good at drafting. I should just stick with that. Um, <laughs> I'm like. I, mean, trade, I did a trade, lot better drafting this year. Though. But um, so one trade that I was very happy that I did, uh, that you still kind of like eh on, was I traded Kareem Hunt and Mike Williams to get Joe Mixon and Alan Lazard. I mean, I just think that's a. It's a wash because Mixon uh, had that. Mixon had that one great week, and then he was so mid. Compared to like, he, I mean, his he standards, was, he, was, he was so mid. For his standards, it was mid. Uh, I, I get that. But he was getting somewhere around like 13, 14 points, which at the time it was so hard to come by. for a run. Unless you had a top three or four running back, it was really hard to get anything that got you above 14 points. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, but let us know. Let us know down in the comments. How would you do in your league? First of all, first and foremost, how would you do in your league? Did, you win, did we win any money? Did we get into the Denny's Bowl? Where you might have to spend 24 hours in Denny's. How'd you do? And let us know down below what you're right and what you're looking for next year for fantasy football. Thank you all very much for watching. Take it easy. Have a great rest of your day.